pitch meeting. So, you got a new idea for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we make Matthew McConaughey an astronaut. All right. All right? All right. And hey, we should film it while we're at it, make a whole movie out of it. Yeah, no, I didn't mean let's just send Matthew McConaughey to space. I meant in this movie he would play an astronaut. Even better. So what happens in this thing? <laughs> okay, so, well, life on Earth sucks, right? Sure, but what happens in the movie, though? That's, yeah, okay, well, in the movie, life on Earth sucks even more in the future, okay? And all they can grow is corn. There's like a famine going on. Big lumps of knob with the juice, I'm familiar. So this ex-NASA pilot Joe Cooper is a farmer because they stopped doing space stuff. Oh, and this is McConaughey? It is, and he's a father, he has two kids, one of which he loves much more than the other. It's the exact same situation with me and my kids, little Becky and little dumb fart face. Yeah, he's got this daughter Murph who's very smart, and this older son Tom who's, you know, not as smart. Okay. Oh, as a side note, I met this young man in my travels named Timothy Chalamet, shows a lot of promise. I think he could be a great Tom. What travels? Anyway. Anyway, so Murph thinks there's a ghost in her room because of these gravitational anomalies. I didn't know Timothy was an interstellar. Like, I just realized. Stop foreshadowing stuff. What? And then he figures out that this dust that forms some patterns is actually coordinates, and he heads there, and it turns out it's secret NASA. Oh wow, wow, wow. Wow. Yeah, and secret NASA is like, hey, we got a secret wormhole mission that we're going to check out because maybe there's other planets we can live on, and we want you to pilot the mission. Why do they want him? Well, they're like, you used to fly for us, so you'd be the only person on board with actual non-simulator flight experience. Come on, let's go. How does they that knew even about him sense? and needed someone exactly like him. Why didn't they reach out? Unclear. And so then he says bye to his kids, and Murph is very upset, and nobody gives a crap about what Tom feels. Sure, who gives a crap? So Cooper meets up with the other scientists <laughs> on the mission and they take off towards this wormhole. Uh, wormholes are tight. And so the mission is to go check out these three planets that are orbiting a supermassive black hole. Oh, uh, supermassive black holes are tight. Stop. <laughs> Never. Please stop. Never. And so these other NASA scientists actually took off so towards tight. these planets about 10 years ago and should still be there. Gotcha. So they have a little debate about which planet to check out first because the one they're right next to turns out has a bunch of time dilation going on. What does that mean? It means down on this planet, one hour equals seven years on Earth. Okay, so I mean, they definitely shouldn't go down to that one first. What? Well, if that scientist got there 10 Earth years ago, that means they've probably been on the surface of the planet for a little over an hour. That's probably not enough exploration time. Hey, shut up. And so they go down yeah. to that one. Oh, okay. But then it turns out this freaking planet's covered in water and there are skyscraper-sized waves going around. Uh-oh. So they gotta get out of there fast, but this one scientist, Brand, she wants to collect the data before they leave, so she goes and does that. Why bother with the data if the planet's clearly not habitable? Dramatic tension. So then this other scientist dies because yeah, she like wanted to look at the waves Yeah, like you can see clearly that running, it's not habitable. And then the engine gets flooded. Uh-oh. Yeah, and so by the time they get out of there, 23 Earth years have have passed. Wow. So Cooper has all these video messages from Tom. Worthless. And he sees him grow up, have a kid, says he wants to name the next one Coop. Coop? Cooper? This guy sucks. And there's one message from Murph, who's now a sad scientist trying to save humanity. Oh, that's the good child right there. That's the Becky, for sure. So anyway, then they head to the next planet on the list and wake up the scientist, who it turns out is Matt Damon. Oh, my God. Yeah, I figured we could do a little Matt Damon jump scare, you know? Not put him in any promotional stuff, just have him pop out. Why? Yeah. Because, you know, I think this might be a cool way to kick off the stranded astronaut phase of his career. That's oddly yeah, specific. Yeah, because after You're oddly that... specific, excuse me, in that you are a unique snowflake. Very special. I like you a lot. We have the same face. No, I got glasses. So Matt Damon is like, hey, this planet's <laughs> not so bad. We might be able to live here for real. Nice. But then it turns out he's a mean Matt Damon and he tries to kill Cooper. Oh no, why does he do that? Because this planet actually sucks and he knew they wouldn't come rescue him unless he sent positive signals. Friggin' Matt Damon, friggin' jerk. Stupid Matt Damon. Yeah, but then he dies when he's trying to leave because he doesn't dock the ship properly. Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. So now there's only Cooper and Bran left, and they All have to do this super nothing. high speed spinny docking thing, and then Cooper's gonna sacrifice himself. What do you mean? Well, he kind of launches Bran and the ship towards the next planet, and he gets sucked into that black hole. Wow, so he dies and turns into space spaghetti? He turns into space getty? No, oh, he goes behind a bookshelf. What? Yeah, it turns out this thing led to a fifth dimensional tesseract thing, and now he's behind the bookcase in Murph's childhood room. Room. What's going on? And so he realizes he can this manipulate gravity. This is the weird part of the movie where I was like, huh? <laughs>
<laughs> I felt so dumb not knowing what the fuck is going on. Caden, he was the ghost knocking books off the shelf. Oh, twisty! So in Morse code, he spells out the word stay, which is the same word that Murph had deciphered on the day he left. Oh, so he does the thing that he knows doesn't work. Interesting strategy. Yeah, and then it doesn't work. What? Anyway, so then he sends some important gravity equation to Murph through binary on an old watch, which lets her save humanity. Wow, must have been hard for her to piece together that her dad was communicating to her via the fifth dimension through a broken watch. Actually, it was super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because see, I can write whatever I want here, so she just kind of pieces it together out of thin air. Sick! And so then Coop gets rescued and gets to see his daughter, who's super old and dying now, and she's like, hey, Dad, good to see you. Now get out of here. Hasn't she waited for his return her whole life? Yeah, but the movie's over now, so he gets on a spaceship and takes off to go find Brand. Wow. And so that's about it. What do you think? Well, here's an idea. Instead of that mind-bendy bookshelf thing, what if we have Coop fight some aliens and there's a big sky beam? No. I had to try. No, yeah, this is pretty good. No, Thank aliens. you. I think this is good to be one of the best movies about checking out other planets for valuable resources featuring Timothy Chalamet ever. That's oddly specific. You're oddly specific. Dude! <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Brian George filling in for Ryan George. I hope that you weren't able to notice the difference between I tried to imitate his performance throughout the entire pitch meeting. Dude, it's you, just with glasses. Like this is me and this is me too. And uh, hopefully it was passable. Um, let me know if you have any pointers in the comment section of how I can fill in for him better next time. So uh, thank you. You're welcome. It's like he didn't do a great job filling him in. Just joking, just joking. <laughs>